Saving your work is something that we all have to do at some point, and it's simple enough. But bringing assets from one file into another file is something we can also do in Blender. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at three ways in which we can do this. Saving is fairly straightforward. Just like most other applications you've used before, you go to File, Save, a browser window pops up, you can navigate to where you'd like this file saved, give it a name, and click Save. The file type generated by Blender is known as a .blend file. All of your work, including any layouts, changes to the UI, will be saved inside this file, with a couple of exceptions that I'll talk about a little bit later on. When you open Blender, you will also see a list of previously saved files. You can click on one of these, or you can just go to File Open, and it will show you a larger list of recently saved files. You can also go to File, Open, and just navigate to where you saved your file, and double-clicking on it will open it. As you work, hitting Control S will save your changes, overriding your last saved file. I'm going to open my preferences and look at the save and load options. You can, for example, have more than one save. This is known as an incremental save, so that you can go back a couple of steps in your save history. Auto-saving creates an automatic backup file, which is written at a time increment of your choosing. The default is every two minutes. In case Splendor crashes, you won't lose too much valuable work. Another handy feature is when you open a file, you might wish to open it using the default preset layer. After you click Open File, you can click on this gear icon in your file browser and uncheck Load UI. The file will open, but the layout will be whatever your general default layout happens to be. I'm going to use something a bit more practical than a cube for this next bit. If you're following along with this course on cgcookie.com, you can download the course files, and included will be this game console model. This comes from another free course we have called Press Start, and is hosted by Jonathan Lampel. Now, one way we can get assets from this file into another file is simply by copying and pasting. We can select a number of objects in various ways. We can shift click, shift click until we've selected them all, and then hit Control C to copy. Then we open up a new instance of Blender, and then just hit Control V. Blender will hold the copies in a buffer, so this is fairly straightforward. However, this is not the best way to transfer assets across, and also not the way I'd recommend. So another way to get assets from one file into another file is via linking or appending. These methods are related, but operate slightly differently depending on what you'll need to control. Let's first look at linking. In my new Blender file, I'm going to go to File, Link, and Navigate to the Game Console Blend file. Click Link. The file will show me a bunch of folders, and we can choose to link a bunch of stuff, brushes, textures, even a single material, or an entire scene. I'm going to go to the Collections folder and select the collection where my Game Console resides, and click Link. Now this collection appears in my file with a collection data block of the same name. Note, however, if I click on this game console, I can only grab it, rotate it, and scale it. I can't go into edit mode, and you'll even see that it's got these handles here at its point of origin, much like an empty. Now, before you think, oh, I'll never use linking because I need to edit my stuff, consider that you're working in a team on a larger project. Someone might be working on this game console, but it is as yet unfinished. But you need this asset to figure out the camera moves and surrounding animation. If you link from the file that your colleague is working on, you can continue to work on that animation separately. And then as your colleague updates their file, you can save your file, reopen it, and those updates will automatically appear in your project the next time you open it. You won't have to do any relinking. Now, of course, there are cases where you do need to edit something. 
and this is where appending comes into play. It works the same way as linking. So we'll go to File and click Append. You'll see this File Browser window open up, and you'll be able to navigate through the same folders just as before. However, anything that you import into Blender gets copied over into your file, complete with all of the dependencies necessary. From here, you can click on any of the objects that you've brought over and edit them as if you had made them in this file to start with. Another way to get assets into your file is to use an asset library. Slightly more complicated, but extremely powerful. Let's take this step by step. I've made a file available with some pre-made assets. Going to open up Blender. I'll use a general preset, and I'm gonna direct you to your preferences. Go to the File Paths tab. Here there's a section called Asset Libraries. Inside you should just see a single entry, and it's labeled User Library. There is a path entry, and you can either navigate to that in your computer's file explorer, then drag and drop the new file into that folder. Alternatively, you can just hit this plus sign and add the folder where your file resides, and that should also become accessible by your asset browser. I'm going to split off a window here and change the editor to Asset Browser. You should see a drop down set to all libraries, and there's a lot of stuff in here, but we can focus this on just the user library for the moment, and if need be, we can click on this refresh icon. Now, if I made this file right, you should be seeing some categories appear, and inside of those, there's a few previews of the assets that I made. I can simply click and drag on any of these assets and bring them into my 3D viewport, and when I release, they are now imported into my Blend file. It's almost like a visual way of appending something. Now, this is the way to go when building something from several assets, in my opinion. It's much quicker than appending or linking, and in fact, this system is so powerful and fundamental that Blender has begun making brushes for sculpting and grease pencil rely on the asset system too. If you want to dive deeper into asset creation and using the asset library, I highly recommend Cubicity by Kent Trammell. For now, you might want to get more comfortable with linking, appending, and using the asset library before jumping on to the next lesson. 